everyone and welcome back to the breakdown. Today I'm going to be teaching you guys how to start a spigot server in Minecraft 1.13. But first I want to mention that this is not a 24 hour server. It's only going to be up and running when your computer is up and running and it's going to be hosted on your own public IP address which is a bad thing because anyone who you give your IP address to, the IP address of this server to, they'll be able to find out where you live in addition to take your internet offline and things like that if they want to. So you only want to give this server out to your friends and family. However, what if you want a server that you can give out to everybody that's up all the time, what do you do? Well, I recommend going to the first link down below. That is the breakdown.xyz slash MC server, and that will take you over to game servers where you get an awesome 24-hour DDoS protected 1.13 spigot server up and running for just a couple bucks a month, less than a cup of coffee, and you can get yourself an awesome spigot server without any issues. It's going to be great, super easy to install plugins, super easy to set up spigot. So if you also have any issues with this, you can't figure out the port forwards, you can't log into your router, game servers will work for you without any problems whatsoever. But nonetheless, let's go ahead and get on into starting this spigot server. So the first thing you want to do is click on the second link down below, and that's going to take you to here, the spigot download, where next to 1.13, you want to click on the download button. Then it's going to take us off to here, where in between all the ads, we want to click on spigot 1.13.jar. It's going to download it in the bottom left down here. Now it might say, do you want to keep this file? Do you? It might not be safe. Well, I promise it's safe, guys. Spigot has been downloaded by millions upon millions of people to start their own servers, and there it is. Do you want to... This, this file can harm your computer. Do you want to keep it? Yes, we want to keep it. It's a trusted site. Spigot is trusted. We're good to go. So let's go ahead and minimize our browser here, and here we have Spigot downloaded on our desktop. Now, if yours isn't on your desktop, no worries. Hit the Windows keyboard key on your keyboard and R at the exact same time. It's going to open up the O Run application. Type in Downloads. Hit Enter. It'll be here. Drag it to your desktop, not freeze of use. We need it on your desktop for this one. So drag it to your desktop, close out of your Downloads folder, and then right-click on your desktop, create a new folder, and just title it Spigot. 1.13 server. You can actually name it whatever you want, but basically this is your server file. You want to take spigot, drag and drop it over here into spigot 1.13 server, and then double click on this file. Now, it should automatically run eventually. It might take a little while. It might even take a couple minutes, but eventually it'll run and stuff will pop up in here. If it's been like five minutes and this hasn't worked at all. What you want to do is right click on it, go to open with, and then Java TM platform SC binary. If that doesn't exist, if you don't have that, you need to download the Java SDK, which you can download at the third link down below. So just go down there, download the one Windows 86, for example, for your version of Windows, and yeah, you'll be rocking and rolling, and this will work. But as I said, it might take a minute, and it did there, but now we have some files here. So we want to go ahead and open up EULA right here, double click on it, opens it up in Notepad pad you want to go to this link right here right now I've already went to this link this server is not going to break Minecraft's EULA but once you've went there and reviewed that document you can come back to here and change this to EULA equals T-R-U-E EULA equals true as long as you're not going to be breaking the Minecraft EULA which we aren't going to be so go ahead and click file save there and easy as that we can close out of the EULA now we just again want to double click on the executable spigot jar file here and it will go ahead and load some more stuff in. This is basically generating all of the files for our server, finishing all of that up. Now, this will be the last time that you run your server using this right here, right? Last time that's going to happen, but we have to do it here to generate the files originally and get things up and running at first. And boom, there they are. Now, let's go ahead and right click on our, our Windows bar up here, right? See that? Right click on our Windows bar. Yours is probably at the bottom and go ahead and click on Task Manager. Then in here, you'll have a Java file running, right? Where's it at? We got to find it. Well, I've sorted by alphabetical order and there it is, a Java platform SC binary. Right click on that and then go ahead and click in Task. That will go ahead and end your Spigot server. And like I said, now we don't want to run it in the way we just ran it. We want to create a run.bat file. To do this, it's pretty easy. Just right click on your folder here, your server folder, create a new text document right there. It's going to open up a notepad. Well, it's actually going to create your new text document, which we then want to double click on to open up notepad. And then you're going to go into the description down below and get this right here. This is your server run command, right? Now I've got this one for four 
right megabytes or sorry 4,000 megabytes for gigabytes down below but I've also got ones for 2,000 and 3,000 megabytes or 2 and 3 gigabytes linked down below but just copy this exactly how it looks here and you'll be good to go except this number may be different depending on how much RAM you want to dedicate to your server so I'm going to go ahead once you've pasted this in your text document go to file save as and then you want to title this run.bat exactly like that and then don't click save yet come down here to save type as and then click on all files so now we've got run.bat save type as all files go ahead and click save it is now going to create a run file right there and we can delete the new text document that we created now let's go ahead and double click on our run.bat file and this is how you will run Every single time you want to run your Spigot server, that's how you'll run it, by double-clicking on the run.bat file. As you can see, it opens up command prompt here. Server will start in 15 seconds, and then, boom, it'll start the server, and your server is set up locally. But I don't know about you. A server means nothing to me if my server can't be played on with other people, right? I don't want to server, start a server for just me. I want other people to be able to play on it. So we're going to make that happen. Now, eventually over here, you'll see the word done. That means your server is set up and you're good to go. It's going to take probably a little bit longer than like a stock standard Minecraft server because it's doing a lot more, right? This can have plugins and everything. And to do that, it's going to take a little while longer. But as you can see, eventually it does say done right there. I'm going to go ahead and type STOP, which stop just exactly like that and hit enter. And it will go ahead, save the world and stop the server. Press any key to continue. And that's going to close out of our server file there. Now, what we want to do is come up here or down in the bottom left to our little Windows icon up here. And then we want to type in CMD. Right click on command prompt here. Click run as administrator. And in this we want to type in IP config. IP C O N F I G and hit enter. This will give us all the information that we need to start our server. So IPv4 address and default gateway specifically is what we're going to be looking at. So let's go ahead, come back over here to our server folder. And we want to find the properties file. So where is it at here? Come on now, server properties file. This is it right here. As you can see, it is servers and it is a properties file. Go ahead, double click on this. And for me, it opens up in Notepad. If yours doesn't, it's like, what? Where do we open this up? Click on Notepad. Once it's opened in Notepad, you can scroll down to find server IP right here. For your server IP, go ahead and enter your IPv4 address. In my case, that's 192.168.1.123. Yours is most likely something completely different, and that is perfectly okay. But whatever yours is, just enter it here next to server IP. Then go ahead and click File save and you can close that of your properties file but you may want to look around here there's a lot of cool stuff you can change uh, on your server but go ahead once you've entered that you can continue on with this tutorial you can come back to your properties file later i'm going to go ahead close out of our server dot properties file and we're going to leave this open however because we now need our default gateway whatever your default gateway is come over to your browser open up a brand new tab and type your default gateway into your search bar up at the top where you would normally type in like the breakdown dot xyz right where you would normally type in that, you want to come and type in your default gateway, which in my case is 192.168.1.1. Then hit enter, and you'll see something that looks exactly or most likely completely different to what you're seeing right here. What you will see is some sort of a login box. This is going to be your router's username and password information, and you can find that information at, I believe, what's the fourth link down below, and that's going to be our article on how to find your router's password, right? This is going to show you the username and password for your router, and basically go down through this step by step. First, talk to the person, set up your router, yada, 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 until you eventually go to this website, and then at the very end, call your ISP if you still yet to find your router's password. So basically, go through this entire process, and and uh, by the time you're done with it, you will have your router's username and password. Once you've got it, come back over here and just log right on in. Now for me, it's a click of a button, boom, I'm logged in. For you, you're most likely going to use your default password or the one that was set up when your router was set up. So once you log in, again, it's going to look completely different or exactly the same as this, but most likely completely different. But that's okay, guys. What we're looking for here is port forwarding. It's going to be an advanced, it's going to be an advanced, advanced, and it might not even be called port forwarding. It might be called apps and gaming. It might be called virtual servers, but whatever it's called, it's port forwarding, right? That's our goal here is to get to port forwarding. For me, it's in security 
and then it's in apps and gaming right here and then I have to click on single port forwarding right so it's a three or four step process for me so just click around guys you can't break anything if you find something and it's like do you want to save just click no if you don't know what you've done just click no and boom it's it's gone you you didn't mess anything up so don't be afraid to click around anywhere and everywhere in your router looking for port forwarding it might be called port forwarding slash port triggering whatever it's called once you find it you're gonna have options for different ports and IPs and stuff like that. For me, I have to click add a new single port forward. You're gonna be able to name the port forward. I'm just gonna call this Spigot Server. Now for whatever port, right, it says, whether it's external, internal, whether it's, you know, local port, non-local port, whatever it says. If it says port at all, you're gonna put 25566. Five, right 25565 exactly like that for your internal port you're also going to put 25565 no matter what it says for port put 25565 and then for protocol it might not be called protocol for you but it's going to have a thing that says tcp slash udp or both right it might just say tcp at first and you have to select tcp slash udp but that's what you're looking for something that says both all tcp slash udp you're looking to get both of these protocols included in your port forward after that you want to add in your device ip now what is this well this is the ipv4 address we have pulled up over here in command prompt so for me that's 192.168.1.123 exactly like that i then click save and then click apply and our port forward is done you might click save you might just click apply but your port forward is done. And the hardest part of this tutorial is now done. If you do have any issues port forwarding, we have an in-depth guide to port forwarding over on our website linked at the fifth link down below. It takes you here where you can see anything and everything that you need to know about port forwarding and getting your router set up. So awesome stuff there. And that's a big help if you're having some issues port forwarding. Now, let's go ahead and launch our server. So doing that's pretty easy. Just come back over here again and double click on the run.bat file that you created. I'm also going to open up Minecraft 1.13 so we can really get things rocking and rolling. Once this is open, there are two ways that you can join your server. Either your local IPv4 address or your public IP address. However, your friends can only join off of your public IP address. Now, What's interesting is if we tried to join the server right now, it wouldn't let us, right? We have to wait until we see done over here before we can see, join the server. And there it says done. Awesome stuff. Now we can go into multiplayer. Then we can direct connect to 192.168.1.3, right? And that is uh, right over here. That's our IPv4 address, 192.168.1.123. Boom, those match and we can click join server. And sure enough, we will see it pop up right here that we have in fact joined the server. Nick's Games and over here we are in the server. Great stuff there, awesome. I'm gonna go ahead and opt myself real quick and so type OP, Nick's Games and now that means I can kick people from the server, that means I can do this like slash game mode creative and change my game mode if I want to. If you opt somebody, make sure you want them to have almighty power on your server because that's what you're giving them. Nevertheless, after that, how do your friends join, right? So what you've done here is you confirm that this server is in fact up and running and that you've set it up properly for you. But how do your friends join it? Well, we can test that as well. So go ahead and disconnect from your server and then go to the seventh link down below. Oh my God, that's crazy. For you, you're gonna actually see numbers here. For me, like for you on my screen, you're seeing a big black box over here. You're seeing a black box over your IP, my IP address. Why is that? Well, because you don't want to give your IP address out to everybody. And you can actually see what information people can get from your IP address right over here. Down to your latitude and longitude coordinates, guys. That's why you do not want to give your IP address out to everybody. Not to mention they could DDoS you or something like that with it. And that's why if you want to make a public server that's for more than just your friends and family, game servers is so awesome and they are the first link down below. But go ahead and take your public IP address here, copy it, open up Minecraft, 
and then we can direct connect right to our public IP address. Now again, you can only see the last two numbers of this, 0.97, because I don't wanna give you my IP address, simple as that, but go ahead and click join server here, and it will log us right on in to the Minecraft server. We can double check that in our console over here, and sure enough, we can see Nix Games has logged in, which is great. And there you have it, guys. Give that IP address to your friends, that public IP address at the seventh link down below, and it will take you over to uh, your whatsmyip.com and you'll be able to get your public IP address that you send to your friends. That is the number that you will give them so they can join. At this point, if you're having any issues with your server and your friends can't join it, most likely it's an issue with your port forward, right? That's an issue number one. People don't do the port forward correctly. Or two, a firewall or antivirus is blocking your server's connection, right? One of those two things are what is going to solve the problem for you. So turn off your firewalls, turn off your antivirus, be very careful online and make sure to turn them back on when you're not playing on your server. But that could be blocking the connection. Also double check your port forward and make sure that is done correctly. Also, if your IP address is a bunch of long random numbers and strings of letters and things of that nature, instead of the format that we've seen here, like 192.168.1.1, if it's in a different format, like it's got letters in it and everything, that is an IPv6 address. And unfortunately, right now, as far as I know, I'm doing a little bit of research every day, but as far as I know, you cannot start a Minecraft server with an IPv6 address. So I'm very, very sorry about that. But hopefully we'll find a solution soon. And when I find it, I will post about it and pin in a comment in the description and comments down below. So awesome stuff there. But nevertheless, guys, congrats. You have your Spigot server up and running, but a Spigot server is not worth anything without plugins. So be sure to check out the video on your screen right now, as well as the video up at the eye right above my face. That will show you how to install plugins on your Spigot server in order to really start having a fun time. Nevertheless, give the video a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. It really does mean the world to me. My name is Nick. This has been The Breakdown, and I'm out, guys. Peace.